I have met so many people who bought the wrong camper. Well, I've owned seven of them and I will go over the pros and cons of each type, plus what you should consider first and no, it's not your budget. Welcome to my channel. My name is Liz Amazing. I live full time in my RV while I'm traveling the country and it's my mission to help and inspire others. In this video, I'll go over the pros and cons of the different types of campers that you drive, plus the pros and cons of the different types of campers that you tow. And I'll even talk about a camper that you neither drive nor tow. And I'll tell you why I sold my last camper after less than a year. So a lot of people will shop, they'll just go to a dealership, they'll pick out a camper they like that's in the budget, and that's how they'll do it. And that is often a mistake, and that's how I meet so many people who are stuck with the wrong camper. The very first thing to do is actually not so much look at your budget, because truthfully, you can find a camper in every price point. It just depends on how old you want to go. But you can find an affordable camper no matter what type. The first thing to really do is think about what kind of camping do you want to do because it's important that you get the right camper that's designed for that otherwise you're always compromising or you're going to have to make some modifications so you want to ask yourself three things one how often are you going if you're just going on weekends every now and then then you'll probably be fine with a lightweight travel trailer if you're going for longer, particularly living in it or for long term, you'll want a bigger camper so it can hold more of your stuff and a heavier, better built four season camper. The next thing to ask yourself is where do you like to go? If you want to go out in the woods and be away from it all, you probably want to boondock. This is free camping where you don't have any services. You're not hooked up to electric or water. You're out there off the grid. Or do you want to stay in campgrounds and enjoy the amenities of that? Maybe you want to enjoy a pool or play horseshoes or that kind of thing. Do you want to go to state and national parks? State and national parks, most of them actually limit the length of camper. And if you're over 25 feet, you may have a hard time getting in. The next thing to ask yourself is how often do you want to move and break camp? Do you want to move every two or three days or every two or three weeks? Maybe every couple months or maybe you want to stay a whole season, say a whole winter in a camper. This also affects the type of camper that you get. There are two main styles of RVs or motorhomes or campers and they are the kind you drive or the kind you pull. The kind you drive are class A, B, and C. So the advantage of having a camper that you drive is that while you're going down the road, if you have someone with you, they can make you a sandwich. That person can take a nap or use the bathroom. If you're by yourself, it's no problem to just pull over on the side of the road and use the bathroom or take a nap. So the disadvantage is once you're at a camping spot, you have to break camp every time you want to go somewhere and see and do and explore. Of course, there are ways around that. You could tow something, but then that adds to your length. And then you've got two engines that you're insuring and maintaining. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with towing, and obviously lots of campers do tow cars behind them. You just need to be prepared for the extra expense of having this additional vehicle with you and for the time and trouble it takes to hitch and unhitch. It's certainly a big advantage if you stay in one place for a long time because now when you're driving around, you'll get to use this lower mileage vehicle. Another disadvantage of campers that you drive is that you can hear everything when you're driving down the road. You can hear your dishes and pots and pans rattling. And in the summer, you'll likely have to have your generator on as you're driving down the road because the living area can get hot. Class B is the smallest camper and it's a camper van. It's on a van chassis and it is ideal for boondocking because they're generally self-contained. They'll come with solar and generators. The thing about them is they're generally no longer than 25 feet, typically 21 or two feet. The big advantage of them is you can take them anywhere. Other than boondocking, they'll fit in all the state and national parks and they're so nimble you can take them to the grocery store or the bank. They're just really great. The disadvantage with them is that every time you want to go exploring, you have to break camp. And even if you're boondocking, the water in, the, in your fresh tank isn't going to last forever, so you'll need to come in and get more water. The other disadvantage of the Class B is that you're limited into how much you can take with you, and they're small. Typically, you will not have a bed couch and table all at once, although they'll generally come with that. Generally the table converts into a bed or the couch converts into a bed, so you'll have to make up the sheets every day. 
Class Bs typically get pretty good gas mileage, particularly like the Sprinter vans. They can get over 20 on the highway. And unlike when you're towing a camper, Class Bs can go pretty fast. They can go 70 or even more on the highway. And setting up and breaking camp is usually pretty quick and easy. Do you own a Class B? I want to know, do you think you could live in it? What are your favorite things about it and any frustrations? Tell me in the comments. Class A motorhomes are like a huge Class B. These are on bus chassis and are typically 25 to 45 feet. These campers are easy to drive because they are like buses, they're smooth, and they're generally pretty fancy. You can find all the bells and whistles in a Class A, and they're typically what the rock stars use as touring buses. They are fancy, and that makes them pretty expensive. They also are so big that they don't fit into state and national parks. They're ideal if you want to go to campgrounds or resorts, though. If not 100% of the Class A's I see, I'd say 99% of the Class A's are towing a car because it's just too big to drive around for exploring. And they do use a lot of gas. They can travel at highway speeds and they're just fine, but often they can get two, three, or maybe five miles to the gallon and that's diesel. Setup on a Class A is also pretty easy. They usually have auto leveling jacks and they're pretty good. But again, because of the size and because of the downsides of driving it, particularly since you're most likely towing a vehicle, they are best suited for staying in place for at least three or four days or a couple weeks or longer. Well, the Class A is the only type of camper I have not owned. So if you own one, how did I do? What did I miss? Give me your pros and cons in the comments. The Class C is a very affordable alternative to a Class A. They're typically 23 to 40 feet, and instead of being on a bus chassis, they're on a van chassis. I've owned two Class Cs, and I really love the clever floor plans that many of them come in, really good use of space, and lots of storage. They can feel top heavy and sort of lumbering to drive, so that's definitely a disadvantage. They're not as aerodynamic as a Class A, so they do use a lot of gas. They typically get 8 to 10 miles to the gallon. A lot of people don't like that bed over the cab. It can feel weird driving it, having that heaviness there, but also it means that you have to climb up to get into the bed and you generally can't sit up all the way because it's a low ceiling. It's a good idea to stay for a few nights in camp with a Class C because it does take a little bit longer to set up than a Class A typically. And if you're camping for a longer term, you probably will end up towing something. So that's one more thing to consider. Do you own a Class C? Tell me your favorite and least favorite things about it. Before we talk about the trailers that you pull, there's a different kind of camper too that we haven't talked about and that's the truck camper. The truck camper is a sliding camper that fits on the truck bed and theoretically it would seem like it would have the best of both worlds. You could leave the camper in the campground and drive off, but no one ever seems to do that. Apparently it's just a big pain to get that camper on and off the truck. My first camper was a slide-in truck camper. I was married at the time and we already had a pickup truck. So it was a great way to start out camping. It was a low investment. We were just going for weekends, so it was perfect for that. It has been so long since I've had a truck camper that there are some things I don't remember. If you have a truck camper, let me know how long does it take to get that camper off and on your truck? And do you ever take it off your truck while you're camping? Just let me know in the comments. So now let's talk about campers that you pull. The advantage is, is that you can leave them in the campground and off you go and explore. And because you're not buying an engine with it, these can be very affordable. If you're just starting camping, the bumper pull camper is generally a good place to start. They can come pretty short and lightweight and very affordable. The disadvantage, of course, is that when you're driving down the road, you don't have access to your fridge or the bathroom, so you need to stop to use that and you have that extra time when you hitch and unhitch. And of course, if your tow vehicle isn't strong enough, then you have to get another tow vehicle. I used to have a bumper trailer. They can be 15 feet on up and they can be very lightweight and you can definitely full time in them. They do make some heavyweight all season ones. The advantage to them is again, that they are affordable. 
But the biggest advantage of the bumper trailer is you can get them in all different lengths and they even make them for small cars and SUVs to tow. So you can have a lightweight one and you can start camping without having to buy a whole new vehicle to tow it. The disadvantages are a little bit longer to set up than even a Class C. They're probably the longest to set up because the hitch is a little more complicated. Now a bumper trailer is more difficult to drive. First of all, you should not go over 65 when you're pulling this kind of camper. You have to be very careful when you're going downhill. They're more likely to jackknife. They're more likely to sway and fishtail. And that's why the hitch is more complicated. They come with weight distribution systems with anti-sway bars, so it's a little more difficult to set up. Some of these anti-sway bars are 40 pounds, so if you're a solo traveler, that's also something to consider. Do you have a bumper pull travel trailer? How do you like driving it? Have you had any problems? What about backing it up? Share your experience in the comments. So now let's talk about fifth wheel campers. They generally come 30 to 45 feet long and you need a pickup truck for them because they are gonna attach over the axles of the pickup. The beauty of this is that they are a lot more stable driving. There's little or no sway. In fact, they're a dream to drive. Fifth wheels have tall ceilings unless you get a vintage one, so you'll have 10 or 11 foot ceilings so they feel really spacious. There's usually a separate bedroom up the stairs so they feel more house-like. Disadvantages of the fifth wheel are, of course, you need to get a pickup truck. There are some that are half ton towable, but definitely do your homework and make sure that that is in fact the case. Fifth wheels are ideal for camping for a week or more. The setup can be really quick if you have a hitch like mine. I can hitch and unhitch pretty quick and then I've got my truck to drive around. Are you a fifth wheel owner? What do you love and not so love about your camper? Are there any features you wish you had? Are you happy with your hitch? Just let me know in the comments. Okay, so here's the scoop on why I sold my six camper in less than a year. I bought it because I was doing a big cross country solo adventure and it was perfect for that. It was a 21 foot Chinook camper van. It was ideal for getting a lot of miles in, for moving place to place, for always being on the move. And it was great for boondocking. I felt safe. I felt like if I wasn't safe, I could just drive off. I loved having all my stuff with me. If I was going to go hiking, I could just grab a sweater or make a sandwich. That camper was like my big purse. As I lived in it longer, I realized some things. Number one, I just didn't want to boondock anymore. I had a bad experience. Somebody knocked in my door in the middle of the night and it was my fault. I was unknowingly trespassing and it worked out okay. He ended up being nice and he told me where to park and all. After that, every time I boondocked, I just felt like I was sleeping with one eye open and I decided, you know, I just don't want to boondock anymore. I really like what campgrounds have to offer and I like having electricity and water and not having to worry about, am I going to run out of my fresh water and also meeting people. The campgrounds are so social and friendly and having the laundromat there too is another plus. The second thing was I was missing out because I was always on the move in my camper van. I wasn't really exploring the areas. I was just traveling and moving. So I wanted to stay longer. And the third thing was space. I lived in a hundred square feet for five months solid for a total of six months. I can do it and I don't want to do it anymore. I had to make up my bed every single day. I had to convert the couch, put the sheets on, take the sheets off. And I was done with that. The space was so small. I wasn't able to take all my things with me and I was just almost stepping on mango just every day. So I bought a fifth wheel camper where I felt like there'd be no compromise. This would be my house and then I'd have the second vehicle, my tow vehicle to drive around and explore. I absolutely love it. I have a permanent bed, a permanent couch, and a permanent table, and it is awesome. Well, you know, there are pros and cons with every type. It's a trade-off. Nothing is all good or all bad. If you have a camper, write your favorite things about it and what you don't like so much about it too in the comments or any questions that you may have. And I want to invite you to join the A-Team. This is the amazing team, the community that I am building where we all help, support, and inspire each other. The way you join is to just push on that subscribe button. And if you liked this video, you will love the next one where I have an emergency roadside repair on my fifth wheel camper. I'll see you in the next video.